Where are we? We took you to Jackson, Wyoming. Welcome to Jackson. This one is gonna be four foot tall, half inch space in between horizontal boards. It is going to be stair stepped and is gonna have a two by six cedar top cap. All right, let's jump right in. On our other videos, what we're doing is we're taking a two by four for horizontal cedar fence and we're ripping it in half. Well, we found that this is just a little bit easier and it saves a little bit of material is to use a two by two when cut down and furred down. It's a one and a half by one and a half. We cut it down to the height that we need it at and use it as our nailers. Now, because we don't have a ton sticking out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use screws when we go to put that face picket on to cover the backside. We'll run through these holes here and just run the screws through. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and measure for our pickets. And we're doing four foot tall with a half inch gap. So that means that every board, every board is five and a half inches wide with that half inch gap is six inches. Six times eight is 48. So we need eight pickets at 59 inches. I'll go cut them. Top down. Bottom up. Top down. You just said bottoms up. Top down, totally. In this scenario, we are gonna do uh, top down, and the reason that we're doing top down in this method is because it is stair-stepped and we're gonna have some elevation issues. So we're gonna run our picket all the way to the edge here. Look at that, it's like we knew what we were doing. We got a little half inch space here so that, that way we can maintain our half inch gap. The next steps that we need to do is we need to cut our stays and we need to finish this bottom picket where we don't have the same elevation on the ground. We have a four inch gap, so we need four inches there and we need like two inches there. We have two options. We can carry one from the edge of our post to our center stay and then we could just stop it there or we could custom angle cut that bottom one Take the two measurements, draw that line, and then cut it. We're gonna do exactly that. We're using these little half inch spacers that we cut. Obviously, if you're gonna go with a bigger gap, you can just cut your own spacer based on what you want that gap to be. When we first started, we were using the spacer on both sides. But once we started continuing, we only use the spacer on one side. The reason that we're doing that is because sometimes you could get off here just a little bit. Your pickets on your pallet, when you start from the second section from the first one, you only need to use the spacer on the farther end make sure and just eyesight and everything is true and straight that way everything just lines up perfect and all your lines are awesome so you have a beautiful palette all right so we're going to measure from the bottom to the top uh looks like we need about 45 inches for a stay there 47 so two at 47 one at 45. On the back side of the fence where I can't see, what Connor's doing here is we're taking a claw hammer and we're sticking it in between the pickets. And if any gap is a little bit bigger and doesn't look right, we're taking the hammer and lifting up or pushing the picket down. So that, that way we can make everything look nice and flows beautiful. We kept our word so far, it is horizontal. See how this post is just like, everything's flat and looks nice. Dude, what the crap is that, man? That, that post is like too tall. So as you can see, the ground is coming up 
So as it came up from this point to this point, we grew another six inches. So we grew tall enough to add another picket. So that's exactly what we did was we came up another six inches to add that one top picket. So now we're stair stepping here. We're gonna come six inches taller and then we're gonna step back down. Corners are a big thing because everything has to line up. If we did it right, everything's gonna be level. So that's where we're supposed to go. Go ahead, Connor. This will be our transition from our six foot fence to our four foot fence. What do we do about all that nastiness? Like, yeah, we cut a little sliver of a picket. So 35, two and a half. We'll actually go 36. 36 by two and a half. It's not dust. It's man glitter, man. If you end up doing something like this, you could cut that extra sliver right here, but right here is where that stay is gonna come down. After that point of control, I can't control what that board does. So if it warps and curls out, I don't want that to happen. So I prefer to just to stop right at the stay and I think it's gonna look better that way myself. There's a lot of different ways to do this. It's just the way that I'm choosing to do it. All right, so obviously when you have a stair step, now we have a gap here. We have a plane difference. Don't fret, friend. Check it out. See, this is all you do. You put that little piece in there. That's what we do. We nail that little piece on so that everything's on that same plane. So that, that way when we put that face picket on, it covers all that. So we wanna make sure and stay to the top. We're not gonna put like a million nail holes in this thing and make it look like Swiss cheese because it is a cover picket. It's just to give the face of the fence a better appealing look. And to hide that post. I like about six nails. Two at the top, two in the middle, two at the bottom. We have a complete fence, but it's not complete because there's one more thing that the customer wanted, the cap. Without a cap, what you see is you're gonna see this right here. You're gonna see the post. This is the only way that you could see the Postmaster post with a four foot fence because you could see it from the top down. So we're gonna use a two by six cedar cap. So we're gonna run it across the top here all the way through. We're gonna do some miters across the stair steps to give it some more character. We're gonna go ahead and run two screws in right here. We're gonna run a screw into each stay, so right here. And we're gonna run a screw into each side of the, each post. We're gonna either miter at a post or at a stay. So we're gonna have overlap 45 like this and like this. And then we're gonna come down through all the joints and screw right into the stay or into the post. Since I'm a half inch there, I think we might have just a little bit of a, a bowed board here. 
We're gonna push it back. We're gonna hold it tight. And put one in there. And then now Connor can go ahead and trace his angle. So before we screw the top cap down any closer to the post, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take one screw, one three inch stainless steel screw. Yeah. Get these nice and flushed up and we're gonna run it home. All right, now that we're attached to the post, we're gonna go ahead and attach to the stays. So, we have our first joint. So now it's toenailed together on the bottom. After we make sure we're good, which we are. We're gonna send this one down, a little bit of an angle like that, so that way we go through all the joints. and then we have a nice clean looking miter. This is how we are gonna adapt and overcome getting the top cap on. Pretty dang pleased with how everything turned out. It's gonna give them a lot more privacy when they sit in their chairs. They probably would have loved a six foot fence, but it had to be four feet tall because it's on a corner and it's Jackson Town rules. So stair stepping it, they actually got just a little bit more height versus rolling it. There's one more thing that we have to do to the four foot fence before we can walk away. We're proud of our work. We want everybody to know who built their fence. And we're not ashamed to display our name. We're extremely happy with the way that this fence turned out. It complements the house very well. If you guys want to see how to build a horizontal cedar gate, make sure and see that video right here. And if you want to see how to do the exact same thing that we just did, only on top of concrete, make sure and see the brewery job right here. It's Dan with SWI, and we hope you have a good dang day.